We've come from as near as La Jolla and as far as New Delhi, from Boston, from Berlin, from Shanghai, and Chicago, We've come from every corner of the world. We are scientists, we are doctors, we are Nobel laureates, we are farmers and students, we're investors and entrepreneurs and policymakers, and we're patients and parents too. But we in this room are perpetual optimists, and we refuse to accept that there is nothing we can do, because we envision a world free of disease, free of hunger, and free of pollution. And so every day, the men and women of our companies leave their homes in the morning, and they go to work, and they turn that vision into reality. 2007 was another record year for the global investment in biotechnology. Deal-making reached unprecedented levels. Venture financing grew by 37% to more than $7.4 billion invested worldwide. And as we all know too well, shots fired at Big Pharma produce collateral damage for even the smallest of biotech companies. Bio's advocacy team will have our work cut out for us next year, and I want you to know we're up to the job. Because the work that you do is too critical to be frustrated by bad public policy. And lives are literally on the line. And the oil age won't end because we run out of oil, but because we have to find smarter ways to produce energy. And that is exactly what we're doing. There are now more than 30 next generation commercial biorefineries online or under construction worldwide, producing renewable fuels and other bioproducts that will transform the global environment and the global economy. Before this election even occurs, we're going to be working with both the McCain camp and the Obama camp to make sure that they understand the importance of recruiting and nominating a new FDA commissioner and make sure that the Senate understands the importance of having a new FDA commissioner as soon as this next administration gets underway. If the average American doesn't even know what biotechnology is, our elected officials won't make it a priority. The bad news is that most Americans haven't the foggiest idea what biotechnology is. The good news is that when we tell them what we do, they love it. People want finding cures for disease and finding new energy solutions to be top government priorities. The Jerry Rifkins and the Michael Crichtons of the world call our work unnatural. But we say that nothing could be more natural than using our human intelligence to understand life itself and to take what we learn from nature's language to reduce human suffering. And to tell this story, we will wage a multi-year, multi-million dollar campaign to help people understand what it is that we do. Confusion breeds fear, but understanding leads to support. And we must have the world's support if we are to overcome the world's challenges. Four billion years of evolution have taken single cells and transformed them into human beings. With these huge brains and these manipulative hands and these keen senses. And with that, we literally reach into our body. We pull out our DNA, we put it under a microscope and we look at it. And from what we learn, we prevent a couple from burying its child. And from what we learn, we prevent a man who's been married for 60 years to walk into his kitchen one morning and ask his wife, who are you? And that is what we do. We use the language of life to fix its mistakes. We use the language of life to enable us to live on this planet sustainably. Decoding the secrets of life scares some people, but it inspires us. Some people ask, how can you play God with the language of life? And we say, we're not trying to be God. We're only trying to be fully human. And we cannot see all that our future holds. Our vision is clear. We can see that the knowledge that you have pioneered and the passion that you put behind it will allow us to never again speak the words, there's nothing we can do.